Hello! Today I'm hopefully going to make up a little bit for all of my previous boring videos uh, by showing you how I built a small battery backup LED lighting system that's charged with solar panels. Now, a disclaimer, a word to the wise, if you will. Uh, anybody out there that doesn't have any experience working with electricity, uh, please don't attempt this project. Um, and those who do, once again, make sure you use your head don't be an idiot. You're playing around with electricity. Even if you're using small solar panels, if you're charging a battery, especially a lead-acid battery or a lithium-ion battery, things of that nature, those can discharge at very high currents, and those currents can kill you in the right circumstances. So please use your head and act responsibly, and don't do projects like this if you don't know what you're doing. Now, with that warning having been said, here's my extremely harmless looking system. Uh, as you can see, it's housed in two basic plastic tubs that you'd get at any store. I think I got these at Walmart. They were just a couple bucks. And this top one here, if I can get it unlatched, is what contains the brains of the whole system. Um, the first piece that you'll need if you're going to build something similar to this is a battery. Now you want to make sure that you use a lead acid deep cycle battery for these. Uh, many people think they can just use a car battery because they're 12 volts. Um, you can actually use a car battery but you cannot discharge it very far. Uh, car batteries are made for extremely high current draws for short periods of time uh, which they're very good at doing but they cannot discharge for long periods of time at very high currents at all or you will kill them. So what you want to get is a deep cycle battery and this one happens to be a 7.2 amp hour uh, and it's an AGM battery which is absorptive glass mat. It's just one form of sealed battery. So you can tip this to the side or upside down and it won't spill any acid out. Uh, this particular battery uh, was about $20, and it's the smallest one that I could buy. Now, batteries are expensive uh, to buy online because of the shipping costs. They are very heavy. The second part of the system is this right here, and this is a charge controller. Uh, in particular, this is a Morningstar Sunsaver 6L charge controller, and I know it does not say the L there, but it is the 6L, which means that it has terminals for a load. Um, now, that is required to regulate the charging and discharging of our battery. Um, if you have a very, very small solar panel, you can hook that directly up to the battery without much of a problem. But these batteries can be overcharged, um, and if they overcharge, they can actually build up hydrogen gas and explode. So you don't want that to happen, and to avoid that, you get a charge controller. And what that will do is when you connect the solar panel into it and the battery into it, it will regulate the current flow into the battery and when the battery's full, it will shut that off, even if the sun, the sun is still shining on the panel. It'll, it'll make sure it gets all the way charged, and it'll also make sure that it does not discharge too far if you have a load-capable model. Now, this is the third and arguably the most fun part of the system. This is our Global Solar 12-watt SIGS solar panel. Um, SIGS is a different style of panel than most people are used to seeing. It's actually a type of thin film, and it stands for Copper Indium Gallium Diselenide. Uh, don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> um, it's actually a less efficient style of panel than most of the normal panels that you see, um, but it makes up for that by being way more cost effective. They're cheaper to manufacture and thus cheaper to buy. This model was about $90, and it's a 12-watt panel. Uh, most 10 to 12 watt panels that are using the standard silicon based solar cells, um, they range probably up to about 150, 160. So it is definitely a better, uh, in a better price range. Now we're back inside. This is the back of that panel to give you an idea of scale here. It's about one and a half foot square, about 18 inches. So, and this particular panel puts out uh, about 0.7 amps 
at 15.8 volts and anyone who is used to using larger panels will know that most standard panels are in the 17 volt range so if you are going to make a system and use these particular panels uh, be aware that they are 15 volts so you won't want to mix them with the higher voltage panels so here's the curtain back in place in that window and you can see the wire from the panel running out here and I've got it tucked into this channel in the wall here these are these are soft walls made out of fiberglass so uh, it's kind of a unique setup but that wire runs right down there and back behind here and into the brains of the box and it actually connects up to the charge controller now if all you want to do is charge a battery off of the sun, then that right there is all you need. You just need the battery, the charge controller, and a solar panel, and of course the wires to hook it all up. That's it. Now if you actually want to do something with that electricity, uh, then it requires some more, and that's where the rest of the mess of stuff in here comes in. What I chose to do for this system was to make a bat a, a a backup lighting system. So what I've got here are two LEDs. Now these are Cree XRE and I think they're Q4 bins for those who want to know. Uh, one is a neutral white and one is a cool white and the cool whites put out slightly higher lumens. And I wired those into the load portion of the charge controller and by doing that the charge controller will then regulate the power going to those in so much as if I drain the battery very far down to where it's going to destabilize the charge controller will then cut off the power to the LEDs so I don't kill the battery. Now you may be wondering what in the heck I've got them sitting on top of and what I did here was I actually used a thermal adhesive that I had back from when I was building computers um, and I adhered them to a computer heat sink which is sitting on top of some screws that are acting like stilts and I did that just to keep the uh, the fins of the heat sink off of the bottom so there would be slightly more airflow. Now if for some reason you're thinking of doing a system similar to this and want to use these LEDs I got these offline and they were about eight dollars a piece give or take I don't exactly remember but it was right around in their ballpark but another piece of equipment that you need if you're going to run LEDs like this is an LED driver and that regulates the current going to the LEDs now what I chose here this is a wired 700 milliamp buck puck as it's called it's made by Lux Drive and that was about twenty dollars and that's a, a little bit expensive but what that allows me to do because I got the model that comes with a potentiometer is I can turn the system on with a switch and then I can use the potentiometer to vary how bright the LEDs are now it's really hard to tell when you're using a digital camera but these LEDs can go all the way down to completely off or get up to bright enough to actually light up the basement at night bright enough to read a newspaper or play cards by uh, it's actually quite impressive they get very very bright so that's essentially the entire system um, to, to recap a little bit the battery cost about twenty dollars the charge controller was about fifty the solar panel was about ninety um, the LEDs were about eight bucks a piece and I have two of them and the driver for the LEDs was about twenty bucks now there's also all this wiring this is all leftover uh, power supply wiring from computers that I already had um, the switch I already had and there's some other various things in there like these speaker terminals that I'm using to connect some of the power if you're wondering what the bottom tub contains down here. Uh, that's just a couple other spare batteries. They're all the same size and I've got them set up uh, all connected to these spring terminals here so that all I've got to do is take these wires which actually come out of the charge controller and I can plug them into essentially whichever battery it is that I want to charge.